Welcome to this episode of Caillou Talks. I am Caillou Ninja, the host of this podcast, and I am super pumped to get this podcast started. Let's cut to the chase. Today we're going to talk about being an entrepreneur. Oof, that's a mouthful. Kind of sounds like a French word, honestly. Entrepreneur. Very French. Reminds me of my trip to Paris last year. Food was exquisite. Anyway, the definition of an entrepreneur is someone who organizes, manages, and takes the risk on a business. But not only we're going to talk about an entrepreneur, but kids who are doing it as we speak. You guys have all heard about Amazon, right? You know, the online shopping site that you that they almost deliver like anything to your house. Sometimes instantaneously, sometimes six days. My last order would take days. Anyway, the guy that started from his own garage, people, was named Jeff Bezos. He said, one of the huge mistakes people make is that they try to force an interest on themselves. They don't choose your passions. Your passions choose you. Very deep. I think I'm going to steal that. And my guest today has definitely had his passion chose him. And it's a passion we all can identify and we use every single day. That's right, people. I'm talking about food. It's not just food. I'm talking about good food. I'm not talking about junk food and those local burger shacks. No, I'm talking about the good gourmet food. Food we love to eat. And my guest today has become known as someone who knows a lot about food. He's only like 13 people. Nikki Zooks has done a lot of things. He's a student, an athlete, an author, and, it, and has an internet, internet personality, a cook, a traveler, a TV show host, and has given its title of food ambassador by a town of Bethel, Connecticut. He is a kid entrepreneur. Oh man, we gotta meet this dude. I'm very excited. Let's get to know this guy. Nikki Zooks. It's great to have you, man. Seriously. The last time I saw you was at our podcast party. First things first, and you'll say I'm very happy and grateful that you managed to be there. Very, I was very delighted, very excited. Yeah, it was very, it was a fun experience, and I just want to say thank you for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Please, the pleasure's all mine, man. I should be the one thanking you for accepting our invitation because you're a great kid, man. I watched your TV shows, your food reviews yesterday, and I gotta say, man. You got talent. Thank you. You too. Thanks. I I work very hard, but I know that you work very hard. This isn't about me, man. But I work very hard. There's a lot of challenges in the way, but this isn't about me, man. It's about you. It is about you. Nikki Zooks. <laughs> so, follow up question. This will be the question on every viewer's mind that are watching this right now. How did this all start? How did... The, when did... Nikki Zeus got, got this idea and gone from that little idea into a big, big thing that got you known from all over the globe. So basically, when I was a kid, I just always loved eating bizarre foods such as like blood sausage, cow's heart, liver. And um, yeah, I really liked eating it. So I had the idea to eat that stuff on the YouTube channel because it's just bizarre food. Nobody else was eating this stuff. So I would review the food and then post it on my YouTube channel but then this was all before the pandemic but then when the pandemic hit my dad knew a lot of the business owners and he was talking to them and he realized that they were gonna get like in trouble by the pandemic so he came home and he told me and then we all had the idea to start this YouTube channel called Nikki Will Eat It and it's me I get the food from the restaurant bring it to my basement we had like a little studio in my basement and we basically just reviewed the food, and hopefully they could get business from that. And, yeah, it just went a long way. Also, my, my dad, JP, wanted to say, he's not here right now. He's, like, heavy traffic because of the rain. But he just, yesterday he wanted me to, me to tell you this. He loved your mozzarella. <laughs> yeah. And he asked if, he could, if you could give him more. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll definitely give him more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to tell him that when he gets back here. Yeah. So... How did the pandemic change your approach to making videos? So, like I said, we went from reviewing, like, the bizarre foods, some might say it was gross, to eating food from restaurants and trying to, like, support their business. So, yeah, we changed that because I just like helping the businesses. and yeah. So it came from food challenges 
to helping businesses. Yeah. <laughs> That's very, I don't know if I can say kind or generous, but I think it's kind of both. Yeah, thank you so much. So, did the did you encounter any challenges making these video during the pandemic? Yeah. I don't know the um, pandemic, like, it limited all physical contact with people. Definitely. Um, so, when I made that switch from reviewing the bizarre foods to reviewing the restaurant's food, is um, basically, like, editing. Like, my dad, he's not tech savvy, so I had to, like, step in and, like, have an editing software, and I would edit on there. And it was kind of hard learning how to, like, edit and stuff, but once I got the hang of it, it was pretty easy. Because, like, from reviewing the Bazaar Foods, it was like, we're not in the, um, like, we're not, we're just in the basement. It, for the, like, pandemic ones, like, the videos of me reviewing the places, we got that, we went to the restaurant, reviewed, like, videoed in the restaurant, and then videoed to my basement. So I had to, like, switch that, and it was just, like, it was hard at first, but I got the hang of it. So, Ferd, talk to me about your book, Will My Idea Work? And how can we buy it? So, yeah, it was um, my, me and my mom's idea. Since I got so many, like, achievements, we wanted to, like, make, put a book about it, like, make a book about it and put it out there because some people don't know how this all started and stuff. So then, yeah, we just made a book, me and my mom's idea. It was, like, it took us, like, about one and a half to two years to make it because there were just a bunch of, like, issues and stuff. But um, how you could buy it, if you just DM me on Instagram, we could ship you a book, and, yeah, that's how you could buy it. So this, that book is basically showing people your success. Mm -hmm. And my journey. Sweet. He's showing up, he's showing up all his achievements. That's what I would have done if I wanted me to write a book. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you're inspiring me to, like, Mom, put this on the idea board. We're going to make a book about how Kai Talks made it. Caillou Talks, the origin. It's going to be a bestseller. I can see it. Bestseller. Every bookstore sold out. Got it, boss. Not boss. We're a team. We are a team. Say that again and I'll fire you. <laughs> so, talk to me. That's why I say every time there's like, talk to me, because it's part one. Mm. Talk to me, Nikki. Tell me your story. How are you named... The Bethel Food Ambassador. Yeah, so I got a proclamation because the all of like the townspeople, the restaurant owners, they all came together and talked to like the town hall, and they um, gave me a proclamation. And in it, it said that I'm the Bethel Food Ambassador. So once I heard that, it was like a big compliment to me, and I just felt really good about that. What perks was it? Like, did it give you like a special? Oh no, no, no. it was just like the name Bethel Food Ambassador. And oh, I, yeah. I was thinking like, give me like, <laughs> maybe they could have figured, like, give me like an 80% discount on every <laughs> single restaurant in Bethel. No. That no, could have no. worked. That, all, all, the, the city hall in Bethel. Did you fall of that idea? <laughs> anyway, sorry I heard you feeling city hall, but seriously, that's actually not bad. So, fifth. And you got a word from the president. Yeah. Of the U.S. So that happened is, it was a shock of all shocks. I came home one day, and my parents were just, like, in such belief because I got a letter from the president. And once they told me, it was, because I didn't really, I thought, I didn't really believe it at first. But then I saw it, and it had, like, the president's name written at the bottom. And that was just really cool. It came in, like, this big, like, lettering thing. And, yeah. I can't believe that the White House noticed, like, what I was doing. I would be surprised too if the president wrote me a letter. This is one of my favorite questions. I'm also viewers like, why do you hate cattle? <laughs> so it's actually a funny story because, well, yeah, I just don't like the way that it tastes. But my mom, she also just cannot eat cantaloupe. But my dad, he it's like his number one fruit, so we always have it in the house. Wow, wow, just wow. That's, that's kind of ironic there. Honestly, yeah, like the dad that's a cantaloupe fan, we're son. And I try it. I try it once in a while, 
But every time I like to see if my taste buds will change or anything, but every time I try it, it's just disgusting. But what, why it makes, what makes it so disgusting? The texture, the flavor? Yeah, the flavor. It's just I can't bear with it. It's just disgusting. What, what does it taste? Bitter? Um, it tastes like sweet, but like a bad sweet. It's, it's hard to do. It's like hard the to too much describe. sweet, like the sweet that's like overloaded. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Nikki, you're moving on to part two. So, what have you learned about what it takes to run a restaurant? So, what I've learned, I've learned two things. That customer service has to be on point. Um, yeah, if you have bad customer service, then you have like, you'll probably have less sales, less like everything. But also, the food has to be fresh. Nobody wants to eat not fresh food. So, yeah, those are the two things that I mainly say when it comes to, like, things I've learned. But, yeah. So if anyone that wanted, like, that's interested in running a restaurant to this food and watching this episode right now, what advice would you give it? Wait, wait, say that again. Like, someone was, like, watching this episode and he wants to open a restaurant, just like you. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give him right now? So I basically say just, like, um, just if you have the idea, just stick with it and, like, never give up, basically, because even with the book, it took us, like, two years to make, and it's a lot of, like, long nights and stuff. So, yeah, just, like, never give up if you're trying to, like, build a restaurant or build anything. Deep, man. I appreciate the last the last phrase. I respect that. Never giving up. I respect that. As you know... I used to host a YouTube show called Kai Talks. Kai is your news, actually. Kai Talks is right now. How do you like having a TV show? Um, it's it's amazing. It, at first, I was kind of nervous, but excited at the same time because I knew that like it's a new experience, and I knew that the restaurants will get a lot out of it so, too. So I just like helping the restaurants. What has being a part of a sports team taught you? Any like life lessons? That you'll take to heart? Um, so basically is that it teamwork has to be on point. There's no, like, one-man team. Like, say someone is just shooting all the shots, someone's, like, just taking all the shots when, like, everyone's wide open. It's just not good for the team, and you'll probably, like, not win any games if that's how you're playing. You know, it all reminds me that right after this, we had field day, and teamwork was the main key of field day. And that was kind of ironic there, honestly. Yeah. Teamwork is one of my values, and that's what I appreciate a lot in some in a team. Teamwork. Yeah, definitely. What's coming up for Nikki Zooks? So I'm going into high school. Um, there's a lot of like high school stuff I want to do, like the basketball team. Um, probably do like intramurals and stuff. Help out with like anything that I can in high school. But yeah, that's really what's coming up for me. Now, part three. What impact have you seen your restaurant reviews have on local business? So the impact is that um, they get more customers, and I just love when, like, I love the feedback, too. After I review a place, um, they always call me, like, a week after, and they tell me, like, thank you, thank you. I have so many, like, new customers, and I just love hearing that because it just makes me feel so good. Wow. Good to see that. Good to see that makes it very... Huge emotional impact to you as well. Mm, yeah. I know you started in Bethel, but where have you been eating recently? Um, like out of Bethel? Yeah. Um, I've been eating at a lot recently. Um, probably the main one is Stanziato's. I like their wood-fired pizza. And I usually stick with it in Bethel, but if I do go out, Stanziato's is probably the main one that I go to. Stanziato's? What, bro? No way. I go to Stanziato's all the time. What do you get? I get cheese pizza or pasta. Yeah, nice. They're really good with Italian food, honestly. Yeah. Have you tried their ice cream? Oh, uh, I tried their, like, lava cake, the brownie lava cake. That was good, yeah. Right. I think you'll love your ice, their ice cream. I'll definitely try it when I go there. What is your... Here's a question I asked, not in the cards. What's your favorite type of ice cream? Type of ice cream? It would definitely have to be strawberry. I've loved it ever since I was a kid. Me and my dad, we always, like, go out and get strawberry ice cream. But if I do want to mix it up, I do, like, chocolate lace sometimes. 
I like mint chocolate chip, honestly. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's also good. Very good. I can top it out with some chocolate syrup. Like, yeah. Very good as a milkshake, too. What's your favorite meal to eat? My favorite meal to eat would definitely have to be penny alla vodka with sausage. A place that does it really well in Bethel is um, Famous Pizza. It's so good. Um, and um, if I'm not, if that, I like seafood. Also, like, oysters, stuff like that. What's your favorite food? My favorite food? Wow. This is not This is not a question. This does not usually happen. Like, you ask me a question. <laughs> this is an interview on Nikki Zooks. But, okay, here we go. My favorite food is, like, hamburgers. Uh, you see, here's my top three favorite foods. First one is, like, a hamburger with no lettuce, just a plain burger with ketchup mm-hmm. smothered mm-hmm. on in between on both sides of the meat. And then with and then with a side of uh, sweet potato, French fries, waffle fries. I love waffle fries. It's like more of a regular thin fry with a ketchup with a ketchup to dip on the side, and also uh, yeah. and also a chocolate and also like a root beer float milk yeah, yeah, as a drink. Yeah. That is good. Second one is like a uh, Italian food. I love an Italian. My favorite Italian food is uh, a cheese pizza with a cheese pizza that's like five inches, like five inches wide and two inches and two inches like long and like and like very hot and fresh yeah. and like melted cheese on it. Yeah, that's mm. it is good. Like you like the when the like the cheese pull. Yeah, the cheese yeah. pull is like good, and that's like the best type of pizza. Honestly, mm-hmm. third type is uh, my mom used to make this a lot for me. Orange chicken with rice and vegetables. Yeah. Orange chicken is the best, especially for Maggie's. Yeah, mm-hmm. orange chicken for Maggie's. No, I haven't. But orange Yo, chicken. Yo, Maggie's is very it's so good. It's yeah. so good, bruh. You should try it. I will. Like orange chicken is like chicken with orange mandarin and orange sauce. With chopped with with like made freshly made vegetables mm-hmm. and rice yeah. in a Chinese bowl. Maggie's Maggie's replies. I'm every channel of yours. Go to Maggie's if you like this show. If you click the subscribe button, if you if you like Mac, if I like, seriously guys, Maggie's is like the number one greatest restaurant. Now, how does it make you feel when you help others when you do your shows, your videos? It feels great. Like I said, when the owner calls me like after a week after me doing the video, it just feels amazing. But also when I help just out regular people, not even with the YouTube channel, it feels amazing because I knew that I helped someone. That's, that sounds that's nice. Very good. What do you want to be when you grow up? I mean, you already have like a mini career all established. That's, <laughs> that's there. But, but when you grow up, Go high school, finish college, get it. what would you make your job be? Um I I'll stick with this, but also I just wanna be like the best restaurant advocate in the world. Um I also like basketballs, maybe something with that. But yeah. Something in that nature. So you made your own restaurant? Oh uh, I have like a business basically with like freshmen to the Oh really? What's the business about? I I don't I'm not the exact business. I I didn't like understand the business honestly. Oh yeah. Um. So we go to like festivals. We, um, we got like a tent and everything, and we basically just like makes fresh mozzarella and. Yeah. Do, do you go to the Stan the Stanbury Street Festival? Did you go on there? Uh, the like. Uh, the street festival like a couple of days ago last week. Oh, the one that you were at? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. You know, sorry I didn't see you, man. No, no, no that's fine. Yeah, it was free, and I, I didn't want to spend time with my dad, Thomas. It was Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. And uh, what's the one restaurant you haven't been to that you want to visit? I mean, that's kind of unlikely because it's like you you are in a living <laughs> food show, my man. So one is definitely... Harpadellas, but also you like you just said Maggie's. I definitely have to try that now. That you're like hyping it up, the orange chicken. I'll definitely try that. Wow. Yeah. See, I make this dude hyped. <laughs> so, fourth one. You are the first person to get an extra part. <laughs> you know that, guys. You got. An, you got. He, he's a special one there. A lot, a lot of these guys. You know, a lot of these people think that he's just gonna get the special no, no, treatment, but no, uh, uh-uh. no, you get a special treatment. <laughs> you could get an extra part. And the fifth part, 
Oh, a fifth bar. I didn't even know he'd get that. You have, to, you, have to, you have to premium special treatment. So give this guy a round of applause for special treatment here. <laughs> so this one's going to be the best part of the entire series that you're going to like. Let's talk about, this is the title of the part four. Let's talk about, let's talk about food. Yeah. So, do you agree with almost everyone on the planet that Connecticut has the best pizza place? Um, not really because. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'll, really hoping you would say yes. <laughs> it depends, cause like people from New York could say like that they like it. People from Connecticut, Connecticut like Detroit styled pizza, but I like the pizza from the Bronx. Um, my favorite is Louis and, or- Louis and Ernie's. My cousins live, like, down there, so we're always visiting, and that's the main pizza place that we go to. But Connecticut pizza is good. Don't get me wrong. I know. No one can deny that. <laughs> but I know. No who, no one can compete with the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> no one can compete with pizza from New York or Bronx. It's, it's already been established. Yeah. But I thought that you would be the first one to not say no. <laughs> But to all viewers, at least I tried. People don't, so don't blame me if when you say, "Hey, Caillou, why does you say why did you make Nikki say that you don't like Connecticut pizza?" Don't blame me. That's Nikki's <laughs> choice. So please don't blame me, and don't on and, and please don't unsubscribe about this. I know that you're a little bit. Some of you are a little bit disappointed <laughs> that the food ambassador say in a TV show that Connecticut doesn't have the best, but he still likes it. Cut me some slack, people. At least I said that he likes it. Anyway, moving on. Best pizza place. So here's what it's going to be. So I'm going to ask you some questions. It's not going to be like a full question, but you're going to ask me the the destination. It'll be like, best burger place in the world. You're going to ask me a location and restaurant. Best pizza place in Connecticut. Um, The best pizza place in Connecticut? Um, I'd probably have to say Village Pizza. Their pizza is always fresh, and I sometimes get their calzone, which is really good. Best pizza place in the Danbury area? Um, it would have to be. Let me think. Yeah, like I said, Stanziato's, their wood-fired pizza is definitely, like, top-notch. Wood-fire handmade pizza? Yeah. With hand-kneaded dough crust, with freshly shredded mozzarella cheese. Yeah. And the... the and the garnishes and the decorations like handmade, bruh. Seriously, who could beat that in Danbury? So, what do you consider the best fast food burger place in the Danbury area? Five Guys, Shake Shack, no, lots of viewers are saying yes, Burger King, Wendy's, McDonald's, or Family Diner. Well, if I do go out to, like, get fast food, which I don't, like, I get fast food rarely, is um, it definitely have to be Burger King because I have a Burger King right near, like, a park that me and my friends go to all the time. So after that, we sometimes go there, and the burgers are pretty good. They're pretty good. Okay, I was really hoping you would say family. Again, this dude is changing. He's changing. <laughs> it's changing. The script. Uh, not that we have a script. This is all just improvising. Now, how about what about French fries? What's your favorite place? Fries. Um. So I in Bethel Burgers and Bites. Their uh, crinkle cut fries are just amazing. With the B and B sauce, their own like signature sauce. It's definitely top notch. Mm, yeah, no one can beat signature sauce. Like Chick Fil A sauce. Yeah. There's like here's one time like mom like mom put some like Chick Fil A sauce in some pretzels. Yeah. And I'm like. Sometimes I like take the canister and like. <laughs> yeah, the Chick Fil A sauce drink. is really good. I'll be like, there's more. I, need more. I, I became like a, a total smeagol from The Hobbit with that. <laughs> like, my sauceness, my sauceness. <laughs> uh, now, what was your favorite burger place in the Danbury area? Um. So, if I'm being honest, I haven't really had a lot of burgers from the Danbury area. What? <laughs> but in Bethel, it would probably be like the Sycamore or Burgers and Bites. The Sycamore has a really good Dagwood. Sycamore. Burger. Yeah. Finally, finally, he's been to a place I've ate. Apart from San Diego's. 
Cinco Bar, we've been there, right? When I, in fact, when we got, when we hang out with my grandpa, we bought some milkshakes and some ice cream there and some burgers. Yeah, they're very nice. Really good. Very nice. Mm-hmm. I got a mint chocolate chip ice cream, I like milkshake, and mom was like, "Mom," because mom was like, "Why? Why?" And then I, and I was like, "Cause mom." Like I, like I switch, I switch my glasses every day. That's Caillou being Caillou. <laughs> Their Dagwood burger is pretty good. But also Burgers and Bites, they have a really good... We went there and we saw, like, the meat get grinded and it's all really fresh at Burgers all and Bites. All handmade and all fresh. Yeah. Final question, Nikki. Have you been to Family Diner? No, I haven't. Mm-hmm. Okay. Instead of, like, channeling all my rage for your show and, and fearing for the sake of children right now that I might be watching this episode right now, I'm going to take I'm gonna take you on a right tree. When you're free, Nikki, Nikki Zooks, I'm going to take, I'm going to do a little deal. i show you the wonders and magic of Family Diner. And, but in exchange, you and your latest Nikki Zooks video, do a, do a review on Family Diner to help my boys out. Yeah. Because their, their business is climbing. Because some people, they don't know the magic of Family Diner. Mm-hmm. And to all my IU Talks viewers, go to Family Diner, and I think that you'll love it. They have loving customer service. The food here is incredible and very delicious. I think you'll all love it there. And Nikki Zooks, I promise he's going to do a review once I treat him to a special visit of Family Diner. Show my favorite food. The hamburger is very good. It's going to be very good. It's going to be a very great restaurant experience, especially in family groups. So, Yeah. Go to Family Diner, and Nikki's going to do a review to help my boys out. Okay, Nikki, now the most challenging obstacle in this interview. The Bean Bean Challenge! So this is when we each pull randomly, without, like, randomly, through this tube of the beans. That's what I'm called from now on. We're going to randomly pull out a jelly bean by twisting the by twisting the top part and lifting it and pulling it down. But it might pull off free. If you pull off free, just choose out of the free beans. So some look delicious and some look revolting. And the way to not and the way to make it more eat harder, you cannot tell them apart. So you don't know what is what. Disgusting or delicious flavors are inside the bean until you chew it. So that's why it's called the Mean Bean Challenge, not the Nice Bean Challenge. But not to worry, Nikki Zooks. There are no cantaloupe flavored <laughs> jelly beans. Mother, bring out the tube. Listen, Nikki, you can already smell, smell it. Smell the tube. Uh, you can already smell the aura of the mean beans in there. Now I must warn you. So let me tell you all the jelly beans that are in that container, but some of them may not have it due to local other challenges. We have liver and onions or cappuccino bean, old bandage or pomegranate, rotten egg or buttered popcorn, toothbrush or berry blue, which could be acquired upon which could be acquired upon request. This is the most easiest. One. Barf or peach. Stink bug or toasted marshmallow. Booger or juicy pear. Dirty dishwater or birthday cake. Sticky socks or tutti fruity. Dead fish or strawberry banana smoothie. One of the most latest beans. Dicky, you go fast. Right. So you gotta like twist it. You gotta twist it and lift it. Just gotta lift it. Oh. And then pull it down. So. So this is how He's got to pick it up. Dirty dishwasher or birthday cake? God, I pick, pick one of them? Yep. One of them. And remember, you, you remember, spitting them out and, or drinking water will receive an automatic elimination. But I think the niggas that can, that can eat anything can solve this. You, you can tell the difference right away. <laughs> will, the, will the food ambassador be beaten by mere jelly beans? <laughs> This is already dishwasher. <laughs> like we said, spit bags are a bomb request. Do not spit it. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> because it never happened. But you were all allowed to eat the mints when we're done with the show. Okay. Now your turn. 
So I got stink bug or jelly, stink bug or chestnut marshmallow. Sink bug. Oh. Okay, second round, Nikki. Ah. I swallowed the jelly bean, folks. Fucked even flinchy. I think that's the strawberries moving one. Or yeah. barf. Which one will you choose? Bro, I would go over that one. Nikki, resist! <laughs> resist! We believe in you, Nikki. It smells in here. It smells so bad in here right now. With all of you guys chewing. Oh my god. Ready. Ready this. Ready this. This is for emergencies. Okay, last round. <laughs> no, this is the last. Uh. Okay. Just take that one, man. Just Little take Nikki no, break. Man. Whatever's up there. Come on. Come on. Go for it, no. Ah. That was that one. Honestly, I can't tell the difference. Oh my gosh, I think your taste buds are dangerous. <laughs> That's why. Hey, Nikki, your last round. You got this. Lift it, bruh. No, just take one and then Kai, you take that last one and see what happens. Do it together. Three. The first one that doesn't relax. So this is going to be the final round. That means sudden death. First one that does a gross reaction will be immediately ruse. Go. That's <laughs> you. Caillou. Caillou. I think it is a good one, but it still tastes disgusting. <laughs> Caillou, you definitely lost this one. Like, you made a face. That was liver and onions, dude. That's really that was barf. It was barf? <laughs> Bye, swallowed. Okay, good for you. Good for you. I did Great it. Great job. Nikki, you won. Good job. <laughs> it has been an honor to have one, to have the one and the only Nikki Zooks on my show today. As I mentioned on the top of my show, today we are talking about becoming an entrepreneur. So let's take another look at the quote we opened today, shall we? Jeff Bezos once said, One of the huge mistakes people make is that they try to force an interest on themselves. You don't choose your passions. Your passions choose you. And my guest, Nikki Zooks, has showed us exactly what his passion is. Helping restaurants by eating their food and bringing attention to them. And that's helping them stay in business. And it's also helping people in the area find great food. See? It's a win-win, people. So what I'm taking away is this. Nikki Zooks has already made so many achievements and made such a major impact. It's not even at high school, people. Not even at high school. He had a vision of what he wanted to do, help restaurants. And look at where it led him. He's an author, a TV show host, an entrepreneur, and honestly, he's a real cool kid. I'll really love to hang out with him one time. So to all my listeners, always follow your dreams and never give up. That's it for now. Thank you for joining me, Kai Ninja, on Kai Talks. Be sure to visit the Kai Talks podcast and be sure to watch Nikki Zook's show. I watched it yesterday and it's so cool. Make sure you watch it and I'm sure you'll love it. See you next time.